this is my favorite part of this whole series. Okay. This is what it's all about for me. This has been the biggest revelation over the last six years of my life. Welcome to the Embracing Brokenness podcast, where our goal is to engage with all of those willing to venture deeper into their transformational journey with Christ. Here are your hosts and the co-founders of Embracing Brokenness Ministries, Steve and Colleen Adams. All right, so let's tackle something else that uh, oftentimes we find ourselves in the middle of when the mess shows up. Um, how do we find God in that mess? Where do we go? Uh, and there are moments when I think uh, we need his divine presence, right? Mm -hmm. And it feels chaotic. Life feels chaotic a lot of times. And it's not, let's look at the world we live in. It's just, it's chaos in so many ways. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. There is uh, a divine presence we need to look for. Katie, what, do you, what yeah. are your thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, a story comes to mind. Okay. <laughs> um, I know I've said before that during the day when I have both kids, I don't have a lot of time to sit and meditate or, you know, even if there's a lot going on and I'm really struggling, I can't just be like, Hey, I know you need your diaper changed, but like, and like, can you just sit there quietly while I pray for 10 minutes? Like that yeah. doesn't happen. <laughs> um, so I was really struggling with something and I, I think my one daughter was napping and my mom happened to have my other daughter. And Colleen said to me, um, go outside and sit under a tree and, and talk to God and just be with God for a minute. And I was like, oh, I don't have a lot of time for that. Yes. So I ran outside afterwards. I sat there. I sat under this tree and I was like, God, I have two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Everything's yeah. all good. Oh, my I God. actually saw my mom driving down the road oh, no. with my one daughter. So oh. I was like, God, you've got to drop a word right now. <laughs> I don't have a lot of time to meditate. I can't be getting in like, a meditative state. Um, and I was sitting there. All of a sudden, this warmth and like uh, I felt wind around me. And... I, I was asking God, where are you in this? And tell me what to do. And I had these feelings about maybe what the right decision was on what I was going through. But I just heard him say, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. I gave you the Holy Spirit, so use it. And it, it hit me because in the middle of my chaos, first, God wants to give me answers. Yeah. If we seek him, he will give us answers. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it was a really cool moment of, I, I don't do that often. I'm not often like, God, <laughs> you minutes. make it happen. Yeah. But he also, he can work in us no matter what, mm. and no matter what distractions we have. And even mm. when there is chaos, he can still be present. Um, so I think that was a really cool <laughs> way of just seeing him work. And also, uh. um. You know, another thing that keeps going through my mind is refinement in the fire, that there's chaos and and pain in the fire. But in Daniel, it says there was a fourth man in the fire when Shadrach, yeah. Meshach, and Abednego were yep. in the fire and they weren't consumed, but they were in there. And then they saw a fourth person and it said that was the son of God in there. Mm -hmm. And so remembering that in the midst of the chaos, God is with us and he's with us in the messy middle. He's not waiting on the other side mm -hmm. yeah. for us to get through it and be polished up and better. Mm -hmm. He wants to be in there with us now. Amen. And and we need to invite him into that. Amen. We do. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Well, that was good. That's awesome. Thanks. Thanks. I yeah, love it. Great. And you can tell God you only have two minutes. I will just find the thing God, yeah, I have two minutes. You better reveal something. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Yeah. But and when like, you're a mom, I yeah. I don't even know. You probably could have given him 30 seconds. I think you're pretty generous yeah. there. And I, think it, that also, <laughs> I think it also goes to show that he has a lot of grace mm -hmm. for us as like for us moms out there that yep. we're like, we don't have time to ourselves. Yep. yep. And yet God yep. still wants to meet us. Yeah, you know, he still right wants there. to talk Amen. to us, and he'll make it work, and he's going to do it quick. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh, that's beautiful. perfect. That's so beautiful. <laughs> messing it all yeah. off. Yep. Thank you. For yes. Great. Michael, finding 
God in the mess. Um, tell us about your perspective there. This is my favorite part of this whole series. Okay. This is what it's all about for me. This has been the biggest revelation for over the last six years of my life. Mm -hmm. You know, we love the mountaintop. Mm -hmm. We love when, you know, our joy is full, you know, our, mm -hmm. and all is right in the world. Everything is going really well. But in the valley, in the pain and the mess, when things fall apart, when nothing's going right, mm -hmm. when you are heartbroken, and that, that is where God is, meets like the presence of God in those moments and the closeness that you experience or mm -hmm. can experience. Yes. There is nowhere, like the, the, the scripture talks about that he sticks closer than a brother. You know, he's, yeah. I've never experienced anything like it other than in those times. Yeah. So, not that yeah. I seek pain and suffering for those right. reasons but you know that's why we don't have to fear it mm -hmm. because in the midst of the storm he's there mm -hmm. it's strongly and, and intimately so um you know i i think back to um you know the the early days after my ex-wife and i separated and we had begun this healing process mm -hmm. um you know god was there in such a strong way yeah. In in ways that I hadn't experienced before, like a real intimate compassion um, that I could I could identify with. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, the the very first, you know, and it's he's just so good and so he he's so multi-layered all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not it's it, there's nothing that uh, that he does that isn't deliberate. Mm -hmm and intentional yeah yeah so you which is why and i'll put a plug in here for journaling and writing things down mm -hmm. as they happen and things that he says and things that you experience mm -hmm. in the in the process because you look back and you're like oh my gosh this i met him here mm -hmm. this is what he told me this is what i experienced mm -hmm. this is the comfort that i felt but i didn't even understand what he was saying mm -hmm. until years later i go look back and he's like oh my gosh this was so multi-layered yeah he was setting the table here for the next 10 years, mm -hmm. but it didn't, you know, so there's, a, it's just mind blowing mm -hmm. yeah. really how he operates. So, mm -hmm. you know, when, when, when this first, the journey first started, I was, I remember being in a park with my youngest son. Mm -hmm. um, he was scootering around and, <laughs> and this was before we were gathering for our first healing care uh -huh. group. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was just meditating on uh, we were supposed to come to the first meeting with a promise. Like uh, God was find a promise that God has, you know, ask about ask him. Yeah. Does he have a promise for you mm -hmm. individually? Yeah. And then bring a symbol of that. Yes. And uh that's when he he directed me to the Isaiah 61. Mm -hmm. You know, I will uh, you know, they shall be called Oaks of Righteousness, yes. which mm -hmm. uh was I was anything, anything. I was more like the reed of weakness. You know, <laughs> oh, like there was no oak of righteousness. But uh, so I, I I grabbed that and then but and then scurried around and found some acorns. I was in a that's right. I, remember, was, yes. I found a, some acorns that you represent me in the kids. Remember those? Yeah. <laughs> but that was life changing. <laughs> so good. Thanks. So yeah, if you find yourself in a mess, just look for God because he'll be there very strongly. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. It totally is. Yes. Oh, your thoughts on this God finding him in the mess. Yeah. Well, I'm going to build on um, what Michael said because you could so hear in what he was sharing the expectation that God is going to be there. Like, as soon as you call him into the situation, he actually is already where there. But when you give awareness and you invite him in, it changes everything. And I agree, like the valley moments can be, they often are, they're written about throughout history, the places where God really meets us and transforms us. And so not that we want to live there, that's hard, but um, pretty amazing. 
I want to share a different kind of story about God, and, and I want it to be related more to trauma and wounds, because we talk about that, but then I think people can think that's a little bit foreign. So um, what I want to share is in the many, messy middle of some, uh, event I was in the middle of, and how I relied on God to actually come in and remove the the trauma and what I was experiencing because of the situation. And hopefully it's an encouragement to other people what it can look like. I mean, I'm always concerned with trauma that it's, you know, like bricks being put in a backpack on your back mm -hmm. and it just eventually you break under the weight of yeah. these wounds, you know, from being in a world at war. And so at some point they have to get unpacked. And usually we wait till it's so full, we can, can't even get up that they get unpacked in a big way. But there are ways we can intentionally bring God, the healer into the moments around that, that actually unpack that brick right away. And so the story I want to share, it's a painful one. So I may, um, cry a little bit, maybe not. But one of the hardest things I've ever had to walk through in my life was uh, my first husband was very ill and he had gone through a heart procedure. And when they brought him out of the heart procedure um, in recovery, um, all of his vitals just went crazy and water started filling up in his body, like just backing up into his organs. And I had just come back to recovery because he was doing okay. And, um, and he was a mess and he's staring directly at me as they're like pushing on him to try to get water out there, pushing all kinds of drugs into him. And he's staring at me terrified and they wanted to get me out. Like they don't want me to see what was going to happen. And so uh, they try to usher me out the door. And as soon as I was out of, eye connection with him, his blood pressure skyrocketed. So they quick brought me back in just to hold eye contact. His blood pressure went down. They tried to take me out again. So we had this pattern and they were like, okay, we normally wouldn't have somebody in here when we're coding and working on someone, but you know, would you be okay to stay here? And I was like, yeah. So they put a chair right there and there's just tons of people. The surgeon comes running down and, and they're working on him. And he just stared right at me and held eye contact and I'm praying for him. And, but I knew his past, I knew his, you know, issues with anxiety and what this was going to put into him. I knew the trauma of this was actually going to be the part that he was not going to recover. And so I'm begging them just intubate him. Um, he cannot, ha he, this will never come out. Like he has major issues with anxiety and panic. And, and, um, and so eventually um, they did intubate him. And when they intubate him, they, you know, kind of told me if, if you want us to do this, I mean, it probably is the way to save him. We can intubate him, um, but you're going to have to make the call in the next two days to pull him off life support if he doesn't naturally start to come out of it. And I said, let's do it, you know, um, but I can't see them intubating. So at that point I leave the room. I had been texting back and forth with my pastor, like through this whole thing. And he's like, what do you need? And I said, I can't, I've never been through something so traumatic in my life. Um, I am not going to be able to get to the point of a decision if it needs to be made, um, to pull the life support with what is sitting inside of me. Like, this is so awful. I'm like, if you could just cover me in prayer so I can get to Jesus, it would be great. So I come out of the room um, before I even go back to tell his parents, you know, what's going on. My pastor comes, he just is with me in presence and praying over me. And I close my eyes and I, my question to God was, where in the world were you in that? Like, if I can understand where you were in that, maybe I can survive this, but that was the most horrible thing I've ever experienced. And, you know, and, and Jesus shows up to me as like, he is just so funny. He is hilarious. And I love to laugh and there's nothing about this moment that is laughable, but I see, I said, sh just show me where you were in the room. I know you were there and I see Jesus. He's, you know, like, over top the back of my head because I'm sitting down and he is just kissing me on the head telling me how much he loves me the whole time and then I was like oh my goodness like you were the one giving me the strength because 
the the hospital staff was like, you are the most gracious. They were naming words about me and what I did for him that were like huge. And I'm like, I am not that person. And I remember saying, you're seeing God in me because what you're describing, that is not me. So I knew God had to be in there, but it was so amazing that Jesus was strengthening me. And I'm like, and then I look over at Bob in this and Jesus is over behind him and he's kissing him on the head and he's like, I got you. And I'm like, wait, you're both places. Like Jesus is in both places. And, and that was even the connection. And I'm like, Lord, like, how am I going to make it through this? And he just took me by the hand. And it was like, Jesus is holding my hand. I can do anything. And I will tell you, it was so funny. All of this is going on in my head as my pastor is praying over me. And when I opened my eyes, I said, I'm good. Thank you. Like, I'm okay. And I never experienced, sometimes it's just sad to have gone through that, but it's not like the level of, I didn't know how I was ever going to process that again. And so my encouragement would be, you know, it's not like we're in this huge thing. It can be in even smaller things that inviting God into, when we experience something, and there's so many things, anything that is not the Garden of Eden um, is a loss that needs to be grieved. We know in our spirit and in our soul, we have echoes back to the garden. We have echoes of not ever experiencing death, not experiencing kind of these tragedies, not experiencing even human conflict, right? Like, and so when we're in those things, they become a trauma, even if it's little and you think it's silly. You know, I had a trauma at Costco screaming at somebody because of a parking space and only because he was screaming at other people, but still didn't make it right. I actually had to process that with the Lord to go, what is in me, you know, and get that unpacked. And so I just want to encourage people. He is here. You know, God is with us at all times. He's sitting in this room. You know, the problem is our lack of awareness and he's such a gentleman. He's not going to come force himself in to your space. You know, you have to give the invitation but um, I think on so many levels, you know, the fact that we have to live like this with the person who is taking us to this um, and he is in full control of this, I think is just the most incredible gift that we've ever been given. And we just have to learn how to use it. Yeah, you, you, you just touched on something I was thinking about, like the, we, are, we have the privilege of being in the not yet. Yeah. You know, no, no other... You know, never again mm -hmm. after he comes back will anyone have the opportunity to 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 be to live in faith and grace mm -hmm. in his presence, but not yet in his presence. Yeah. You know, to 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 be trusted with that kind of mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. It, there's something about that. Mm -hmm. You know, we always want to go, come Lord Jesus. Well, out in, in his presence is the absence. You, you, there, there's no faith, right? There's right. no the truth. This is a privilege. It's a privilege. Yeah, it's a privilege. Yeah. I mean, and it's a privilege that Jesus is telling us about, right? Like we often think about, at least I do, like how cool it would have been to be in Jesus's time, to be one of his disciples, just following him and learning from him and hearing from him. And yet he tells us, I have to go so something better can come. I mean, what we have that's so beautiful is him templing inside of every single one of us. It's not like we have to share like with Jesus, different disciples, different people, we didn't have to share. He is with us connected at all times. And so you can see why Jesus said something much greater is that we have the power inside at all times. And for us, it's a matter of acknowledging it and using it. Um, yeah, for the advantage, not in a worldly way, but for all that that it can give us when we acknowledge it. So. Which uh, brings up the, the the word grace to me, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, the messy middle is full of grace. There's a part of our life that we don't understand. Um, you know, we've heard the acronym a million times, God's riches at Christ's expense. Mm -hmm. And that's partially it. There is a, um, there's the difficulty of sorting out um, what we would would think is the anesthesia of this world as a solution mm -hmm. to our problems in the mess of it all and then sitting patiently waiting 
for God's love and grace to pour over us. You know, I look over, I look, and it's, <laughs> thank you, Lord, for the, the, the visual here of this messy metal and the three Rubik's cubes sitting in yeah. front of us. Um, but um, we have this, we have a need, we have a mm. need for self-compassion. We have to be mm. able to, and be willing to accept his grace and his Amen. love and his compassion for each one of us. You, you in that story, you know, Jesus showed up for you in a, in a huge way. And that's not maybe for many of our listeners or viewers. It's not a kind of occurrence they can relate to, right. but it's something that's available. For... It was an occurrence I could relate to. Yeah. In some ways, I was like, I just need you to show up. I just knew I would break under yeah. the pressure of all that. And so it was out of desperation. It was like, show me where you were. I think when we think about the attributes of God of, you know, omnipresent and these mm -hmm. big words. It also, when we think about what they really are, he is fully present in everything. So part of my desperation was, why did you leave me there? Like, I felt so alone. Like, why did you leave me? Why did you leave Bob? He was like in complete terror. And it was like, but you say you're this, so show me. Mm. And, and I think sometimes it gets us over the big words and the blaming God. So it was out of complete desperation. Yeah. But I do, God is very visual with me. He made me to be a visionary kind of person. And so that is, you know, one of the ways he speaks to me where somebody else he may show in a very, very different way. And I think it's a great point because yeah. he will speak to each of us differently. Who we are and how he, who he created us to be means he shows up in our life in ways that we can relate to. Yep. Right. So you are a visionary. I don't, I, I don't see that type of thing typically. I mean, for me, uh, I go in the shower and some, that's my, that's my time with the Lord. A lot of times it's just because I'm not thinking of anything else. Uh, maybe it's partly the, the water just kind of <laughs> over my head and body. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. Um, and it's a place where he said, Ruby's Cube to me, you know, <laughs> like Ruby's so Cube. Cool. Uh, so I think there's, um, I don't know, there's, um, there's a lot here. Uh, when it comes to grace, Mike, what, what um, yeah, what, what experiences have you had? What, and God's word is full of grace that he gave to his people. And we were able to look back in, in history and over time and see just how he showered his love and grace for even if we sometimes we feel like the, those that maybe didn't deserve it even, right? Mm -hmm. Do we really deserve it? That's the whole idea. Mm -hmm. What comes to mind for you? Well, it kind of it sort of encapsulates what we've been talking about, um, you know, that getting out of the perfection mindset, yep. um, mm -hmm. you're just embracing who first, who he is and who we are to him and what, what do we really have in Christ? Yeah. And, um, sure. you know, getting, getting, you know, grace for the journey is really a, a lot of it is perspective. Yeah. You know, we're getting the right perspective in the journey and, you know, that we are in the middle and you're going to be in the middle till we're taken out. That's right. You know, there, we're not going to get perfection mm -hmm. and that shouldn't be the goal. Right. Um, the goal is would just be become more like him yeah. and gradual, you know, from glory to glory from, from faith to faith. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so I guess accept that for us, you know, yeah. for, for yeah. whatever that looks like for you, you know, it's, yeah. um, that's a, that's a hurdle to cross. Yeah. You know? it, it's a, it be, you know, because of the world we live in, it's sometimes it's a high hurdle. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. I think um, shame is the language of the world's kingdom. It's the language yeah. of Satan. When we sit in shame, mm -hmm. it's because we're believing the lies of the enemy, mm -hmm. which actually aligns our identity with what Satan says, which is really, really scary. I don't think we tend to think about it that way. Um, and a lot of secular research is being done on this concept of, of shame and, you know, um, self-compassion, grace, or things that are constantly coming up. I don't know how I could be compassionate without clearly being defined by God. And so just even a simple one, but it's been a real struggle for me over the past year, um, I have a genetic disorder that really seems to be amplifying itself um, recently. And so the, it feels like so much of this last year, 
I have been laying on the couch in pain. I haven't been contributing to many of the things that were goals that I had. And so I was just feeling worse and worse about myself. And it was funny. I finally talked to God about it and said, you know, I, I, I'm sorry, God, like I'm not doing all the things you've called me to finishing our book, doing this, doing that. And I just don't even feel like I can get up and do those things. And it was funny because God showed me something about my identity. It showed me years ago um, that I'm a watcher on the wall. He put me on a big cliff looking out into the ocean and he said, watch the enemy and alert people to his movement. Well, in all this time of laying around in pain, what do I do? I've been praying like crazy. My relationship with God has gotten even closer. Um, and I almost feel like my relationships with others, um, just because of praying for them, has brought deeper connection. And certainly, I'm more in tune to the wiles of the enemy, spending more time in scripture. And so it was funny that God showed me I am more productive for the ways he wants me to be productive than probably how the world describes productivity. And um, and so I think embracing grace for ourselves has a lot to do with understanding the rules of the kingdom that we are called to live in, and they look so different. And I think the messy middle is so complicated when we don't walk it out from the kingdom's rules, which is really hard to to understand, right? I mean, we see how Jesus walked it. You know, we're not him, but he certainly walked the kingdom rules well here. And we're trying to understand how to do that in our lives. But if we try to do this journey with the rules of the world, we will get beaten up constantly. And I think I realized that I was, learning, you know, in that area, just living under what the world says, you know, is important. And for God to assure me, you're being so productive in ways that I made you be productive. It was kind of shocking to me and revelatory, but I think that really is grace, like grace. how God speaks to us in grace. Yeah. Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. So to wrap things up uh, on this round, so I look at this and I uh, this, I'm holding a Rubik's Cube. I, I will solve that later. I'm sure you will solve crazy. it later. Now, <laughs> now here, here's the fun thing, guys. So, so because I had to look this up online, it came to mind that, um, and you're going to watch it right now while I describe this, that the uh, Guinness World Book of Records for solving this puzzle is 3.13 seconds. I can't mm -hmm. even imagine. I'm sure my brilliant wife will be able to do it faster than that. I better right. record it. <laughs> but you're watching it happen right now before your very eyes. It happened in December of 2021. <laughs> so can't even imagine. But here's what I want to tell you. There's a likelihood that you will not serve, be able to solve this puzzle in 3.13 seconds in the messy middle of this life uh, here on earth. So uh, have patience to uh, journey on and soldier on through the journey. Know that God has you in his arms through the process and that there is hope for every one of us here in the messy middle in this in-between life between Eden and heaven. Uh, there is a messy middle. So let's just remember that and keep in mind that God has it all in, in his grasp and for you. Paul, would you be willing to pray us out for Absolutely. those of us that really need to live through this messy middle? Yeah. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, we are just so grateful to you, Lord, just for your presence, your presence in our lives, in our communities, um, Lord, and just... We are blessed and highly favored. However, we oftentimes don't realize that the blessing um, also means working through things that are painful, that are hard, um, and bringing you into the equation, Lord, is, as you grow us up um, to live out the purpose that you have for each and every one of us. So, Lord, um, I think one of the things that's so important uh, from this message that we've had is find safe community. Um, and so I'm asking that you help people find connection with others that is safe um, and where they can communicate and where they can grow in you, Lord. Um, and we just ask for that blessing over anyone who's listening to this message. In Jesus' strong name we pray. Amen.
And uh, I'll leave you with this. A reminder, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. So I want to encourage you all, uh, come back again. We uh, love doing this little series. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Carl, yeah. for contributing. Blessings. This was another episode of the Embracing Brokenness podcast. For more information on Embracing Brokenness Ministries or to subscribe to our blog, podcast, YouTube channel, or engage with us on social media, please visit our website at embracingbrokenness.org. Thanks for joining us.